probably a 12 manner, you know, which would be a DC-2 or a or 16 if it was a DC-3, but uh, I got separated from them. And I wound up with this ground crew. And uh, so uh, it was, uh, anyway, I got trapped in the fire. And uh, I, so I ducked into the burn. And I went behind a big, it's a fir or pine tree and I took a hole in the ground and put my head in it. The air was a little cleaner. And then when the fire raced past me, uh, I flanked and went up, up to the hill to where the, the base was, you know, where the cook camp was. And so uh, the next morning, somebody told me to get up and I said, I can't. So uh, they put me to work digging a, digging a garbage pit. <coughs> And I was going to get, dig it six feet deep, and, well, and I had got down about two feet, and you start throwing your cans into it. So anyway, well, he had another thing. They had the chainsaws up there, and I thought to myself, that's ridiculous. They need them down on the fire line. You know, these these cooks can get out there and you know do a bow saw thing like I've I've always done, you know, or a buck saw. Anyway, that's, oh yeah, and another, th another thing was um, they had a guy that were flying a bird dog, I think it was a T-34, and he was always scared to get down low. <laughs> so he dropped some supplies in one time and hit the outhouse and knocked it down the hill. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I forget his name, but uh, <clears throat> that was good for a laugh, you know. <laughs> What was so rough about that jump? You said that was a rough fire. Was it a rough jump? Not especially. Yeah. I don't think uh, I probably hit a little harder than usual. You know, <clears throat> you know, the landing is like an eight-foot free fall off, off the top of your house. You well, know? why were you separated? Would you get uh, out? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't have any idea yeah. what happened. Uh, if it was my fault or what? Yeah. Yeah, I was. I was separated. Well, I did eventually meet up with him, probably up at the main camp on top of the hill. Did you ever, uh, what was your, be, be, before your last jump, we'll talk about that, but what was your worst jump of the of the nine other jumps that you had, the toughest jump? Well, probably up at Troy. Um, it was a three-man jump, and then on the way to our fire, they spotted another one that had been reported. So this one guy being an old an old man, which is what they call you know, uh, uh, if he's been there more than one year, uh, they they put him on him. He was on that fire by himself. And then another guy and myself went on this fire. And uh, I remember the thing crowding out. So we had to stay stay around for a while for that. And then when we left, uh, he told me to throw my uh, crosscut into the brush. And I said, no, I'm not going to do it. Because I was afraid an elk might stumble into it and get injured, you know. So I took that thing with me. And we were on a rock slide, and I fell. And so, you know, with 100 pounds on your back, you've got to get on your hands and knees and push yourself up that way. So I think we walked about a half, uh, or probably two miles, and he, we wound up in Idaho at somebody's farm. And somebody met us there. A lot of work. <laughs> but, but he told me, he said, he says, I'd throw that thing away. He said, uh, last year I was on a fire where we had a 14 mile walkout. He said, you want to throw away your belt buckle after something like that. So. so now tell us what happened on the your last jump in 1961. What what was what yeah. time of year was it? In August or was it July? Yeah, it was in August. Uh, it's a hot day. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's hot or not. Uh, August is usually typically hot anyway. But I remember the night before we went east to another fire and it was uh, dusk and we couldn't find it. A little bit leery of jumping at night anyway, which 
is understandable. But uh, so anyway, the next morning they had this uh, fire reported at uh, Darby, uh, Como Lake, or the map calls it Lake Como. But uh, I think it was on a tributary to the Lake or Rock Creek, I think it was. So I remember picking up my chute and a uh, rigger said, "You're gonna like this one, Scrooby." So then the body, is, you, you were hung up for a moment and then it broke off? Yeah, yeah. And then what happened? Well, I hit the ground and I broke both my feet. And the right foot, I it, it snapped the, the uh, canis bone, which is the main bone in your foot. And the other one, I don't know what it was, but uh, um, so they put out the double L's, which is for uh, and then they dropped a uh, radio, and I think the radio probably hit a snag and broke, broke the radio, so then they had to, uh, I remember they were talking about getting in a pack animal to get me out of there. So they finally decided to have these other two guys chop a heli spot, which is what they did, and they got me out of there that way. And then, so in the meantime, they had dropped two more jumpers, and one of them gave me a Demerol shot, and the other one cut the uh, stitches in my boots, so they could save them. They, they cut your boots off? Yeah. So they could save the boots, or save your, just to get them off? Just to get them off, yeah. Were you on a pretty steep side hill, or what was that? Like? I think I was, because, uh, you know, when you, when you, uh, when you drop facing uphill, you can't even do your, parachute landing room because you just chose to swim into yourself. So I think maybe that's the way it was. And then uh, you don't, is it still kind of hazy because you were you were unconscious or the oh, shock? No. You, you no. remember everything. I never lost conscious at all. Yeah. In fact, I don't remember much pain. So that happened in what, the afternoon? Yes. And what, how long? Wait a minute. It uh, must have been midday. And then, so how did so the helicopter took you out to where? Where did it take you to? Well, he took me to, uh, well, it was between Darby and Missoula, Hamilton. Well, he stopped at Hamilton, and, and uh, I think he bought me a Coke. So we get into Missoula, and they, <laughs> they had the traffic blocked in front of St. Pat's, you know, and uh, kind of hopped up on that Demerol. See, it's. 
us something. So I remember one of the nurses, I think it was Lane Crowd's mother, Leonard Crowd, if you remember. Him. Sure. Uh, she said, you know, the way they brought you in here, I thought you were half dead. You were out there telling jokes. <laughs> <laughs>